Guys, welcome to Speech Bubble. Butch Hartman here. I've got a very special guest, Mr. Devin Warkheiser. He's here. And uh, Jace, he's got something really cool to say to us. Go, Devin. In a world of bullies, insane teachers, and gross school lunches, me and my two best friends, Jason Butch, try to do the impossible. Hey! Create a guide that will help you survive school. I, did you say a god? A guide. A guide. guide. Or a god. We, <laughs> we can do a god either. We... Try to create. We do the impossible. Create a god yeah, yeah, that yeah, will yeah, help you survive. I can't school. wait. To, roll the theme music. The god of men. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, that, that was our awesome theme music. Did you like the theme music, Devin? Did you like it? Oh, my God. It's just ringing in my was, ears. Was it epic? Yeah. Could yeah, you hum just... it for us if I asked you to? No. <laughs> God, no. You know what I liked about Devin? The minute he walked in here, Devin's a laugher. He's been laughing. He's a good guy to have around. I think I'm going to replace Jace with yeah, Devin. Yeah, I'm a Would comedian's best friend. Which I, oh, I think it's awesome. you, know you got to be I that way. Go ahead and I'm just having fun as I move through life. That's you awesome. Know, I choose to laugh through things. You got to. You got to. It's that or cry. He, I, I, well, so, <laughs> and I've gotten so good at crying yeah i and need to practice <laughs> that was all last night i can't cry anymore can i just cried like 10 minutes ago it's like i, I do i do i get my eyes swelled up are they did look swelled up the well, eyes normally no. the podcast is just butch crying yeah yeah my, my, my morning consisted of jace texting me going hey when will you be here i'm like why he goes i forgot my key well, so i post that, <laughs> so i so i pull up i pull up and he's and he's uploading a video on this on the yeah. stoop outside which yeah. that's how what that's a, what a good worker he yeah, is I mean, you're running a great team here but <laughs> thanks buddy <laughs> Thank you. And Devin, we're glad you're here to experience this team. Exactly. Yes. Hey, I, thanks what, for having the, me. The big question in everybody's mind is what in God's name does Workheiser mean? What kind of a name? Does it mean like workhorse or like work? That's the guess. House, work house horse, worker? Workhouse. I don't know, house man. I haven't done my genealogy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I tag myself on all my social medias, work harder, because a, a friend of mine called me that one time and I thought it was funny. There it is. Um, there it is. Workheiser. And that, and that friend tragically, uh, never mind. <laughs> that friend was actually kind Kyle Massey, Disney Ky Channel's oh, yeah. Kyle Massey. Nice. The famous Kyle Massey? Is who used to call me work harder, and that's why my uh, my handle there, on all there the things you go. is that. So you go. thanks, Kyle Massey. You, is there a rivalry between Nickelodeon and Disney? But it seems like... There's a not. corporate rivalry okay, between sure. Nickelodeon and Disney, but we were all homies yeah, because cool. we're all kids. We don't, we don't, we don't care. Yeah, yeah. totally. Nobody it's cares. Not, it's not like other team. It's yeah. like, we're all the same. We're all kids acting. This is fun. Yeah, yeah, so so cool. we were. We all knew each other, at least all of us who were on shows at the same time. Like We all grew up together and we're all... Friendly. So, like, where would you guys see each other? Like, at parties and things like that? Yeah. You guys were on the same lot. You know, like, they were on the Disney lot, and you were on the Nickelodeon lot. I mean, there was a Nickelodeon lot. There, no, there, really there, there was a, a building. Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon lot, had a building. Yeah. We were at some studio in North Hollywood. Yeah, know? I know. I, know. I, 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 know. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it, was, it was North Hollywood, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's where they filmed Sons of Anarchy after. Oh, my wow. gosh. That's right. Yeah, yeah I put those two in the same category. Right? So I thought so, too. Ned's Declassified, Sons of Anarchy. Ned's Declassified Biker Survival Guide. Yeah, put them together. We're Teller Auto. Is in Sons of Anarchy, like is where like we played football at lunch. It's so funny to see. Oh, that's right. Like like were they were they were they their hangout like the little auto shop area? Yep. Oh, was like our out. like side uh, yard there of the studio. Go, so so, funny. so let's let's get into it. We got yeah. Devin Workheiser, who Hi. was the star. No, I, and then it kind of, you, you were like the star of something. That's cool. I, like I'm the star, for example, I'm the star of Speech Bubble. I'm the star of Speech Bubble, which is a lofty thing he's to be. He's the sidekick. Yeah. He's yes. the Robin. I'm Batman, got even it, though he's taller it, than me. Got it's got it, it, kind of, it's it, an it, awkward, we look really weird in the costumes. Yeah. But <laughs> it's really, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> Robin and Batman. Scrunch down. Scrunch down. Scrunch down. <laughs> scrunch down. <laughs> You're not scrunching. <laughs> down here. Well, now I just look at him and go like, I just look at his scrunches. He's like, very yeah. good. good but Devin, you were the star of Ned's Declassified yeah. High School survival guide middle school survival guide middle, now it's middle school survival guide yeah we never made it to high school oh it was that was when the show died what was it was it we what? graduated middle school wait, wait so what was the name of the show then uh, just school survival guy. School yeah. survival guy. Got survival it. Okay. Yeah. See, I, I was going to say general school. Like, yeah. like all, like all Scott Fellow shows. Too long of a title. That's very. All I was going to say very much long too long title. of a title. That's his shtick, you know. Actually, Johnny Tess wasn't a long title. Yeah, that's that was short. A short. That was a short title. But okay, never mind. Big time forget, rush. Forget no, just a hundred things to do before high school and Nancy classified. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. The good shows had short titles, but the bad. <laughs> I'm kidding. Excuse me. I'm joking. So I mean, uh, dude, that was a great show that ran for how many years? Three years. Pretty and cool. We filmed. Well, we filmed for ten years. It ran for ten. We filmed for three years. Yeah, ran for ten years. All you over said the we world. filmed for ten years. Yeah, I know. And it ran I know. I, I heard it. <laughs> we uh, we filmed for 
for three years, <laughs> right. ran for 10 years all over the world. That's wow. amazing, dude. Yeah. And I, what, the weird connection you and I have, other than being in the speech bubble right now, sure. where you and I are, with, with, with Jace, the guy who's had, you're not scrunching down, by the way. Yeah, come on. Thank you very much. Come scrunch it down. There we go. Devin, you can, you can come up. Yeah, yeah. No, Scott Fellows was actually working on Fairly Odd Parents with me when he came up with this. In fact, I'd walk into the office going, hey, Scott, you got those Fairly Odd Parents scripts? Yeah, Butch, I got them. He would be shoving things off of his desk. working on our show. He was developing developing and pitching your show. And and so there you go. So what I would like from you now is a huge thank you for allowing- To you. Yeah, to me. For allowing allowing Scott Scott to to develop. hire me. That's exactly right. (laughs) So Devin, you're welcome is all I want to say. Thank you, Butch. You're welcome, Butch. Thank you for (laughs) providing Scott a workspace where he could yes. not do work for you right. and develop his own pretty project. Pretty much that's pretty much I'm glad it was loose enough. Exactly. <laughs> it, happened a, it happened a big time rush too. He did the same yeah. exact thing. <laughs> saw Devin's headshot and were like, that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> it was you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, hey, who's the handsome kid? And he was like, get away, that's creepy. I'm like, no, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. So grateful to Scott Fellows. Love that man. And I loved Fairly Odd Parents, by the way. I mean, I grew up on SpongeBob and Fairly Odd Parents. You've heard of Fairly Odd Parents? That was, a, that was a TV before show. Before okay, I was yeah. on Ned's, I was nice, watching dude. Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob. There was a crossover with Fairly Odd Parents and Ned. There yeah, was yeah, we, we actually had, had Cosmo we, and Wanda. We had Cosmo and Wanda yeah. on. I mean, because I remember once once Scott left me, Butch, I'm going to make my own show now. Bye. I'm like, thanks, Scott. Hey, can we use Cosmo and Wanda in the show? <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess so, Scott. Yeah. And, uh, I started I started to sound like Ted Knight from Mary Tyler Moore. Well, I guess so, Scott. Uh, and he but, stole uh, Darren Norris. Yes. Yeah. We oh yeah, had Darren Scott Norris. stole Darren Norris as the as the janitor. Yeah. And then Tara Strong was on there oh, yeah, as your right. teach as your as your as your cute teacher, I believe. Yeah. So you you how old were you when you got on that TV show? I was twelve years old when I booked the pilot. Wow. wow, dude. Now, let me ask you this. People on the Speech Bubble, in the Speech Bubble audience want to know, how does a 12-year-old get onto a major show like that? How did you yeah, do that? Yeah, I, I had been acting in Georgia where and I'm Jay from. scrunched down while he's talking. Okay. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, sorry, guys. Now, you, were, bo- you were born when? 1991. 91. Right. I'm 27 years old. God, I have, I have um, shoes older than that. Go ahead. You, know, so. um, you should throw those out, man. No, they're nice. They're nice shoes, dude. Okay, come okay. on. Come on. Right. Yeah. Right. They're good Italian. Should we, throw, um, should we throw them out here on Speech Bubble? Yeah. yeah exactly. So, um, wait, you're born so in I was in Georgia. Born in Georgia. Got it. And I had been acting in Georgia, but like Georgia was a right to work state. There, there wasn't a lot of work there. So once I started booking in Georgia, my mom and I came out to LA and my second pilot season, um, I booked Nets. Wow. Just crazy. And what year was that? Like 2002, 2003? 2001, somewhere around, around there. 2001, right. 2003. Yeah. Because Scott started, di- yeah. Scott yeah, two, started three. disappointing me around that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah it, that's, that lines up. That's that that line, it lines right um, up where Scott disappointed Yeah, so me. like for kids at home, I mean, you kind of need uh, insanely... Uh, supportive parents for sure to start that young or insanely pushy parents. My parents were not the, um, the pushy pushing the dreams on me. They just, I was like a hammy energetic kid. I can't tell that at all. (laughs) 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 And they were like, they always were like, this isn't normal. Like, we're not going to stifle this. Like, how do we funnel this? How do we something? cash in on this? Yeah. How do we, how do we this, like yeah. put this into something productive? Well, of course it's awesome. Um, so yeah, I had crazy supportive parents, which helped and then met Scott. Yeah. My second pilot season. Very book cool, Nets. You know, what's cool about that. I was going to say, cause like my daughters were very cute when they were little. You live out here in LA, you get people approach you. Hey, your daughters are really pretty. Of course. Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I, I always made, well, my wife and I made a vow cause we were in the business. We're like, we'll never put them in the business unless they ask us to be sure. in the business. Cause I think you can, I think a I've, kid has to want to do it. I've thought about that. Like the old, I'm, I'm grateful for exactly how my life has gone, but the older I get, the more, um, kid actors freak me out when I'm around them. Really? Yeah. Explain Devin Workheiser. I'm just like, this is such a weird environment for a child to be. Oh, heck yeah. They're way too aware of people. They're way too self-aware of people observing them. They're yeah. kind of put on. Their yeah. motives are questionable as kids. I mean, they're not questionable. Their motives are like, let me be the best. Validate me, validate me. And yeah. it's just freaky to look at. And some of them are beautiful, mature, yeah. uh, amazing, like precocious. kids, yeah. but precocious. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it just freaks me out the older I get. Cause I'm like looking into my past and I don't know that I'd want to hang out with 12 year old me, even though I was a nice kid. <laughs> you were a nice it's kid. It's just freaky. It's just freaky. You know, it's really They're weird. little I- adult. Children. No, I know, I know, I know. And uh, they had, like you said, they have to become very smart at a very young age. Yeah. And the other thing too, a lot. It's very tragic for a lot of uh, older kids who've grown up in the business. They 
they're worshipped as children yeah. on the set because they're like the money. They're yes. like the star yes. of the show. Yes. They were given everything. Yes. They're told they're great. Da, 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 yes. And the show ends. Yes. Then they got to go into society and be with people who don't care. They're with yeah. they, they have to like go, hey, I was on a TV show. I don't care. I don't. You're shorter than me or whatever. Or you know, Yeah, talk. whatever. Yeah, yeah they, they just, they I, don't, in, I don't care. That's irrelevant to me. Yeah. Get into the real world. So it's a very eye-opening experience and sometimes a tragic one for, for kids. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah. I mean, we definitely have heard the horror stories of yes, kids have. who haven't made it through that transition. And yeah, that yeah. transition is hard, um, especially if you have public, like now everything's filmed, like to go through the process of adolescent to adulthood and the intersection of fame and to go through it all on pe- so, pe- social media where strangers can watch <laughs> oh, this yeah. like weird transition where you're it's experimenting weird, and yeah. struggling with your own identity. Pretty crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and the, by the way, social media was not even really existent when you were doing the show. No, we, as much. We, we missed it by like that much by like six months. We missed mm-hmm. the social media boom. And it is strange. To see, like, look, my follower numbers are fine, but <laughs> but to see yeah. where everyone else who overlapped us and yeah. passed Ned's oh, um, sure. in relevancy just by a couple months, yeah, th- there they all hit that train at the right time I and know. blew up. We I, I see kids that are like ten years old with a, with four million followers, and you're like, how does how? this happen? How how yeah. in God's name does this happen? Yeah, well, yeah. Because Jace, we work really hard for every follower we have. Oh, that's right. Our yeah. nine followers, dude. Our nine. <laughs> followers, in the world to me. By me. name. <laughs> yes, we do. That's right. We know all three of yes, them. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, there's well, there's the Workheiser family. We've yeah. got them. Yeah. We got them now. How many? <laughs> I think that's that's it. Yeah. No, Drake Bell said the same thing when he was on the podcast. Do you think it, it was good that you didn't have social media at the time, though, when you were 12 doing it? Yeah. Because it's just, uh, yeah. you were saying, some of them do go off the deep end when Yeah. When it, they are it's uh, social following. media's. It's too much. It's too much for all of our yeah. brains, and especially when you're a young teenager with some level of fame. Yeah. It's a yeah, weird that's thing. Huge. Yeah. This yeah. many people telling you you matter at a young age, mm-hmm. while some would say that's a good thing, right? We should all tell kids, build right. up their confidence yeah. and tell them you're a little snowflake, um, <laughs> and, and we love you. Like, you know, you're, you're perfect and unique. Like, yeah. Yes, and it's strange being on a set mm-hmm. and all these adults, like, energetically... I'm I'm the star of the show. So all these adults like treating you like you're yeah, like almost like a king or a queen. I, I know yeah, that's, they're that's treating a good way to... you with like this high esteem, and you're yeah. a 13 year old like yeah. you don't know anything. Because so I keep w- your head on straight. Then uh, is people. it straight? Is it on straight? Yeah, it's straightish. You know, I've been to a chiropractor recently. Would, yeah. you, would you consider yourself a better Drake Bell? Is that kind of what yeah. you are? Much better than Drake Bell, I think kind that's of in that way. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Drake. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you play oh music, God. you're a handsome guy, you're on Nickelodeon. I'm a better Drake you're Bell. You're a better Drake Bell. Basically, yes, that's you what heard it, it here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Devin says he's a dr- better Drake Bell. <laughs> We're here to say I think he's a just as good as Drake Bell. Sure, Drake. sure, That's what sure, I think. Sure, there sure. you go, right. Now, and you, play, you, play, <laughs> and you play music. I do. Now, you've been playing music for a long time, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that started after Ned's, um, and kind of on Ned's, a lot of the adults and the kids on Ned's all play guitar, and I started learning guitar and started writing songs. Very cool. And uh, yeah, I got a new EP coming out this year. Look at that, I man. What is, what is it called? What's it'll it be called? called Chapter One. Um and it'll come out uh, maybe in the summer. Very cool, man. I have some songs. One of your songs is called Sparks Will Fly. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. What is that? What's that song about? Flying Sparks? It's got to be Flying Sparks. That, that that's came, where I'd go first on that explanation. I mean, probably, that's, 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 right. that's, a, that's about like a, a romantic connection. That was from a, an, like kind of the beginning of me playing music, which I, I was co-writing with um, like pop producers all over LA. I was signed to Universal at the time. No, wait a minute. So did, did, did that all directly stem from Ned's, Ned's Declassified? Yeah. Isn't isn't that amazing how uh-huh. like that one break, that one show, Scott Fellows disappointing me leads yeah. to you having a whole life in the industry. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's wild. So thank you, Scott Fellows. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, no, but- I'm I'm I love Scott Fellows. <laughs> um, I love Scott Fellows too. Yeah, it's, kind of. It's, anyway, <laughs> yeah, making sure he knows it's, it's a kind of. It's been a weird, cool journey, man. Especially with Ned's because Ned's was genuinely Scott's the man. Like Ned's heart. Uh, the heart of the show was yeah. Scott Fellow's heart, which was genuinely wanting to connect with an audience and help them in some way and, and totally. just let them know like, hey, you're not alone. It's all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And we'll tell this story that's zany and funny, but like the heart of it was real was, hey, it's you're going to be okay. You're going to yeah, be fine. And totally. we're all in this together. And because that's the heart of the show, like fans of the show are so sweet now, like for the rest of my life, the people who know that show are like, 
they're like grateful. They're they feel like indebted oh, yeah, as sure. if I wrote the tips. I'm like, it was not. It I was, was just. Acting. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, let me ask you this: because you yeah. were a kid and you've grown up, do people yeah. recognize you on the street? It happens. Yeah, it happens. Uh, it happens more when I'm not in LA. Yeah, I can because see because I'm much lower on the totem pole in LA. So like yeah. people are like, ah, yeah. Right. So am They're, I. By the way, when I when I leave LA, it's like, oh my gosh, Butch Hartman. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I swear to God, people know you by face. They do actually. They do, which is I very would just strange. know your your gorgeous know. drawings. Well, we, I saw on Twitter you just you posted a iCarly uh, drawing. Butch Hartman yeah, draws. Are you going to do Neds? Oh, yeah. You want me to? Yeah. I will do. Yeah, it for I do. you, buddy. Yeah, oh, they, I want a Butch Hartman draws. I should do a Neds one. I definitely will. There you go. And then draw like Scott in the back. Whatever version of Scott you want to draw. Like with a no, strap to a Wiley Coyote red yes, rocket exactly. flying through the sky. That, that's what it is. <laughs> with you with the remote in the background. But I would, <laughs> yeah, I exactly. would love that. I thought that was so cool to see like your aesthetic in iCarly. Oh, yeah, thanks, cool. man. I know we worked with Jerry Trainer on Tough Pup. He did a voice for us yeah. and stuff like that. And a uh, really funny guy. And He's uh, fantastic. Do you do any voice work at all? Do you ever get to I've uh, done uh, some, them? but I have auditioned for a lot of Nickelodeon voice stuff. I, I voiced like a Casper in a Casper Scare School movie. Got it, got it. Um, but I haven't done voice in a while. I I'd like to. I remember Cartoon Network pilot a while back. It was like this weird art style. Was that it? was a Nickelodeon one. Oh, was it Nickelodeon? Yeah, it was uh, the Wizard of Crud. Yes, I sp- really. You saw that? They put, they put it the on. Uh, yeah. yeah, they put it on like YouTube. It was very weird. And yeah, it was fun. When was that? That was years back. Like, 20, like 2008 or something yeah. like that? Okay, yeah. Okay. But they put it on YouTube. I got a list of movies uh, that uh, DW's been in here. D- sure, D-W. sure, sure, sure. Hey, DW. We got, um, we got, okay, you work with Savage Steve Holland. Of course. Oh, yeah. Make, we've had him on the speech. He's been here. Oh, amazing. Rules. <laughs> yeah, that was the first movie well, after movie. Ned's. Yeah. Shredder Man. That was, Shred, the, that was the about, first a kid, about a kid who shreds. You shred paper or you're like, no, like on a skateboard? No, like it was Shredder based Man. on a book series and it was about like this nerdy kid who like, I don't know. I don't even know, oh, man. <laughs> was it the Infinity War of Nickelodeon? Is that what that it was? was? My favorite. It was really? So yeah. Shredder Man was? Oh, this, that's good. Citizen yeah, Kane? I this, like, I don't have the whole movie memory, but I have this one scene of you dropping papers all, along the yeah. table. Everyone's like, what is this? Oh, my gosh. So I, yeah, I it was, wanted to be Shredder There it is. Like, yeah, it was yeah. like a deep, I was like a, a yeah. yeah. You got it. You're a you little older it. than Jace. Okay, you, influenced, you influenced Jace. It's kind of cool. Isn't that wasn't amazing? I've never heard Shredder Man compared to Citizen Kane. Yeah. Oh, this is a great yeah. moment for me. By the way, neither have I. <laughs> Savage came on. We were talking about different things. And I was like, so Shredder Man rules. Let's talk about that, please. Yeah, so no, I loved it when I was younger. Dude, That's I love that. Yeah, Savage, Savage is just awesome. a big old yeah. sweetie Savage pie. Savage mostly cried when he was here. He was oh, yeah, most, yeah. He was mostly upset. He's like me. He's either laughing or crying. There's <laughs> yelling, no in between. Yelling very loud. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, my cat fell out of my window. Like his, his cat, his cat. That's a, that's a good Savage Steve Holland. No, I haven't heard that story. That's, yeah. I'm going to watch hey, back. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, punk <laughs> hey, pickles. He's like best. And when you're on set with him, he's like, okay, uh, when the producers are over here, he's like, okay, are the bad people gone? The bad people uh-huh. are gone. Like, you, you, you do a great Savage Steve. Don't talk to the bad people. The bad people. If it could make me any money, that'd be great. But people actually cared about a Savage Steve Holland impression. Yeah. yeah. But he's great, and you worked with him. Yeah. And so you, you leave Ned, you're on there for three years. You guys keep, you keep in touch with the cast at all? The, yeah. Uh, with, uh, yeah, uh, we're all... We're all in contact mostly. Daniel Curtis Lee. Daniel Curtis Lee and, and Lindsay, I. Lindsay Shaw. Lindsay Shaw. You keep in touch Lindsay with Lindsay Shaw and I catch up a couple times a year. Daniel and I are still like friend friends. Um, he just graduated college. Wow. Got his degree in linguistics. So he's smart. He's a smarter person than us. He's a smarter than all of us. I did well, not go to college. Was he younger than you? Was he, he was the same age. We're, him and I are the same age. You're like 27. He got, he's, uh, he got graduated college at 27? Yeah, because he went late. Like he went, oh, I got you. He went gotcha. later. He didn't start at 18. No, it was um, just my math was all messed up. I'm yeah, like, yeah. He, he went. He's this and you're that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He, he, yeah. I mean, he did it in four, or three years or something. He wait. Went so you're saying you can go to college at any age? Is that what you're I saying? I went to zero college. No, I didn't go. I, I went to Cal Arts. I went to art school. That's what I did. That's something. Yeah. You went to zero college. I went to zero college. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Go zeros. I gotta say this. I, I've always said this about college. I'm not knocking college, but I always encourage people like before you go to college, before you get into two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, yeah. really figure out what you want to do. Yes. So at least you can have a roadmap for your life. Yes. Because before you go in. And because I've met so many people my age, I'm in my uh, older than 30s, um, but people it's my age are- the 40s, th- That's right. They're still- <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's even called the 50s. It's called the 50s, It's called butch. the 50s, yeah. <laughs> but people get into debt. They get into all this debt and they're yeah. paying it off later. I just dealt with a, a friend of mine very recently who is still in debt from school loans when he was like in his 20s. It's a it's, horrible it's, uh, system yeah. to start young people off. Money's hard enough to manage to start yeah. young people off yeah. in the hole so far yeah. before they- 
even know what their path is to make money. Totally, dude. Horrible yeah. system. Exactly. I mean, but it's, I, I get the system of like, well, go to, co- parents are like, go to college. <laughs> I luckily knew what I wanted. I knew what my life path was, and yeah. college wasn't a part of it. Um, yeah, exactly. So. And by the way, and, and look, you turned out great. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, you're, more or less. You're doing. You're, well, uh, I was going to point out some flaws later. It's the second cool, part cool, of the cool. podcast. We're we better than Drake Bell, so that's good. Yeah, I love this. Yeah. I think we've actually start. We've established. We've, we've than established Drake. a beef here. A here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you come at me, Drake. <laughs> Normally has a lot of beef. Now Drake Bell will have a lot of beef. Yeah, this oh, yeah is Drake Bell is beefy. beefy. Have you started. seen his Instagram? He's all beefy now. He's like, oh, yeah. I him and I did. Um, I ran into him actually at the YouTube space like a, a, oh, yeah. a two years ago, yep. and uh, they were doing this uh, "Where's Walter" yeah, uh, YouTube thing, and they had me on like a little bit, and I saw Drake then, and that was when he was like. Prime. He's like uh, buffing muscle out. Muscle mode. He yeah. had just released like these photos from this magazine where he's jacked. Yeah, yeah. He was actually sitting in that chair. He actually came and sat in that very chair. I saw. Yeah, yeah. I saw. He was yeah. here. Yeah. Were you intimidated when you walked in? Like Drake Bell, that's the chair Drake Bell sat in. Of course. <laughs> Drake like came to our like pilot uh, like rap party when I was twelve. When he, you know, he was like already on Drake and Josh mm-hmm. and after Amanda show and like he was like the elder uh, Nickelodeon star. And, like a star. He was like fifteen and I was twelve, but he was like the elder. Yeah, yeah. And he like came over and was like, "Yeah, dude, this is your pilot." And like, uh, that's was, not how he talks at all. Dra- but he was, that was like, a "Great Drake." That's not how he talks at all. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But he was like, you know, you're. This is gonna be cool. Your life's gonna yeah. change. And I was like, what? That's cool, man. So Drake mm-hmm. Bell was encouraging to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. So I mean, what's f- what's funny is Scott Fellows had nothing to do with Drake Bell's success. I'm I'm aware of no, that. No. That was Dan no, Schneider. Dan Schneider. Oh, that was Scott. Dan Schneider. Exactly. Yeah, that was so, all Dan Schneider. So, dude. So, what is in the future for uh, for Devin Workheiser? For me, um, I want to figure out what Workheiser means first of all. Like workhorse. Good luck, man. Yeah, Workheiser. Send yeah. me send well, me whatever you find. Twenty three and me. So uh, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't done really? that yet. I want to. I want to find out. Um, what's next for me? Uh, you know, lots of I, lots of things. I imagine in a year from now, a lot will have changed in my life because um, I just like feel like a lot of opportunities blowing up. But um, that's good to hear. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, with, so the, with the music primarily or the acting stuff, all things. There's a lot. Look at you, there's man. a lot kind of percolating right now. But it's been, you know, it hasn't been the the easiest. Like I, I work day jobs. Like I work at. Late Sunday afternoon. No, I work at um, I, I work at my friend's shop in Venice, um, like this magical retail shop. Very cool. Um, first, uh, wait, 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 hold on. A magical retail shop. Yeah, yeah. They sell they sell magical like retail items, like magic wands Unicorn, and like things. like there's things like that. No, like, I mean you know not literal. We take things very literally. Yeah, here. I hear Say that. Yes, your mouth saying no. Well, I'm because sure. because <laughs> it's like yes, kind of. Yeah, it's all like beautiful, amazing okay. things that will. Uh, feel good for people to buy, but it's not magic wands. It's not, it's actu- not magic. It's themed. not actual magical. Things. No, no, no. It's Venice. It's just a very okay. Very because you live in Venice. Yeah, I very. Feel like um, I'm hiding the truth behind it. I feel like you're really. I'm yeah, always some, hiding truth. There's okay. some kind of yeah. You're you're holding something back there. Um, I mean, come on. Well, that's no, so, but, so you work there with your friend. Yeah, so I, I work there with my friends who own the business. Um, I I had to get day jobs like a couple of years back, and it was my first time working. Uh, jobs that like, weren't like acting a, like in an my actual life. Job. Wow, how about and, that? And it's a it's a nice life uh, life path thing where like I w- I didn't think I ever wanted to work a regular job and it certainly didn't feel good to have to because I needed to pay rent. Sure, but I'm so glad. Like it felt like a necess. It feels I'm, I'm in it now. It feels like a necessary part of development of like this world is, of like being a, being in the real of being world, being a human people, in the world, and having and a life growing experience. up to be an adult. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. this is more of that weirdness of child acting. Like also having money for ten years after being fifteen, like and getting off the show and just having money. Um, Strange thing, it, yeah. it, you don't realize how it uh, might separate you from normal life experience oh, totally. that you need. Like I've needed to work this job and just be an employee who clocks in and like works for a team and has a boss. Like yeah, I've needed and that you're not, experience. And you're not, not worshipped uh, like uh, like a child star, you know? You're yeah, like, yeah, that's been needed too. To not be <laughs> like told right. I'm wonderful for like doing nothing, mm. like actually having to work. Jace to tells earn me that respect. all the time. I'm, yeah. I don't I don't do anything. But I don't get anything days. back. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. He he pays me actually. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. That you know, that's a really profound thing you said there, my friend. I think a lot of people out there need to know that just because you're not an actor yet, if you're working towards that, the stuff you're doing towards working toward that, they, people might not have started being a child star like you did. Yeah. But if you're an adult still working toward that dream, you're all this all the experience you're gaining 
is very valuable for when you do get that acting job. Definitely. Like I know what I'm learning in this phase of my life now will help me in whatever that next creative phase is, whatever shows I'm on or whatever more acting comes music. Yeah. It will be deepened by this experience now. Um, and I do think that uh, people need to know that, like the path to your dreams is like very windy oh, and it time. does mm-hmm. not go how you think it's going to go. Yeah. But if you're, if you pay attention, it, it's kind of going where y- totally. you need to be yeah. to grow. Like if you look at your life as not happening to you, but happening for you then you go, okay, like, why am I here? Mm-hmm. How can I grow from this? Like, what can I learn? What can I uh, invest myself in here and not be so, no, it has to be, it has to look this one way. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that's a hard process. Like it's so easy to say, but it's been emotionally, you know, I want to be farther. Al- follow me. Like I want. <laughs> like there's a We're part of me you. that wants to be farther along of than course. I am. Yes. But I also can see I'm exactly where I need to be. I know, bro. So, you are. Well, you seem pretty together to me. It seems like you're doing pretty well. You know, I'm you seem pretty like, well adjusted. Like I said, if I'm, I'm mostly well adjusted, except when I'm crying all night. I know. You walked in here with a headless doll. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I mean, but other than that, yeah. I mean, don't what? talk about her. <laughs> Handed me a knife. I'm like, I don't want to be part of it. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson is my friend. <laughs> no, but hey, listen. So I think that's really profound and that's really good because it's really funny. We were watching. Uh, the t- my wife and I are developing our own network and we're looking at the app build right now. Yeah. And the developers are working with. They showed us a chart this morning. Yeah. And they go, here's the happy flow chart. And we're like, what's the happy flow? This is if everything goes perfectly. It's like you log on, you get here, you're taken here, you pick a sure. program, everything's perfect. Sure, sure, but sure. But in the non-happy flow chart, you know, yeah. So like you're trying to get to the happy <laughs> flow. <laughs> I know, we're all trying to get to the happy flow chart. Yeah. yeah and, so, uh, but, and, there, and there are moments of happy flow, right? right. Like we all find there's those moments where everything kind of opens and coalesces. Ned's was that, like, and everything goes right. up in a straight line. Totally. <laughs> But then it's all gonna totally. turn, and the objective's exactly. gonna change, and who you meet. Yeah. Well, the thing, the, the great thing about you is you had really well-adjusted parents. I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's definitely definitely kids uh, who've gone through the business who their parents just use them for the money, and yes. all this stuff is terrible. Yes. And these kids grow up with no sense. They have no uh, no barometer. They have no compass. They don't know where they're going. Yeah. But you like learning, just learning how to work and taking it seriously. Like, oh, I have to work a job now. This is cool. Yeah. Because you know what? That success can come again, but it's yeah. like now it's going to come in such a greater way because you're an adult and you can handle it. And you'll yeah. Know. Like I, what I loved about. Jerry Trainer, he kind of got really famous when he was older. Right. You know, and so he, he was right. like, he wasn't a kid. He could take his own money and handle it. Right. And so he, he uh, but he was around a bunch of kids. Right. And he would watch the stage moms. Must and, have been so weird. For yeah, him. he did. He, he would tell, I can't share things, but he would yeah. tell me stories about certain things. No, and, it must have yeah. been so weird for him. That's what I mean. The older I get, the more I look at the world of child acting. It's strange, guys. It's a strange world. It is. Parents <laughs> talking to kids. Like the kid can do something for the parents' kid. For like, for example, my, my mom would keep me away from the parents who like would talk to me as if they could get something. My mom would be like, "Oh, uh, uh-uh. uh, don't yeah. talk to my kid. He's a child. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't talk to him. Yeah." In like, no like, other area of the world. Like Devin, could you, talk Devin, could to you, a twelve year old, could you put this watch on? Let me get a photo right, of you. My, right. my daughter designs watches. Take and, a photo with my kid. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Interesting, man. right? Yeah. And what's funny, and this is no offense to Ned's or anything, but like that show was like a TV show on Nickelodeon. Like, imagine yeah. if it was like an even bigger show, like, 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 like a could, Disney Channel show. Or, no. or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I know what you mean. Like the Cosby like show. Happy or like, days or something. Yes. Right. You said happy days. I'm proud of you. Good for you, buddy. There you go. And I was like, That's I'm, my era. I, I was throwing it back for- Thanks, buddy. For your old self. Hey, Cunningham. <laughs> I appreciate that. The kids watching this, they have no By idea. By the way, my hip really hurts. Okay. So, well, that's cool, man. So, um, I love hearing that. And so, like, do you go on audition still now for things? Like I movies do. and stuff? I do. Um, I do, man. And I've come so close to, like, some really amazing projects. It's weird. Co-host of Speech Bubble. You were up, up for that. You didn't get yeah. that. Jay Scott. Got that. Sorry. Well, no, Devin. I think after this podcast, you got it. <laughs> he's really, he's really yeah. upset. Look at his face. Devin's upset. Oh, he's I'm plotting. Have it. I'm done here. <laughs> it's been weird that I've acted my whole life after Ned's, but nothing has been as relevant sure. to the world at large as Ned's. So mm-hmm. that's what some would call. Marmaduke was huge. Some would call. Marmaduke. Some would call peaking at 15, which is not what it is internally for me, but like Good. that's the optics from the outside. So I've come close to like some really amazing um, roles and projects. Yep. that didn't go and and that's the way of it um so i still audition i'm creating things too i write now as well mm-hmm. um 
What do you write mostly? Like, do you write songs? Do you write I write plays? songs. Yeah, I'm developing a show, a feature yeah. film. Welcome to my world, my friend. Yeah, yeah I sir. mean, yeah. that's what's cool too. Is like the n not getting the acting work that I wanted led me to like actually take responsibility for like, what do I want to? If I have the choice, like, what do I want to create mm -hmm. in the world? If I'm going to be working towards jobs. Why not, why not just uh, wait for auditions? Like, why not write my own projects that I can work on? I'm glad towards? you said it. I tell people that all the time. In fact, when I showed you, uh, when we walked around the studio here, when you first got in, I yeah. showed you the Vision Possible yeah, stuff that we're doing. Yeah, which I love so much, man. Yeah, my, I'll give you a copy of my book before you leave. Yeah, uh, please. But it's, uh, it's about... Um, uh, uh, moving your dreams forward, mm -hmm. whether you know what you're doing or not. Meaning mm -hmm. this, you always have to take a step forward because mm -hmm. you're not going to get anywhere unless you take. I always say, if you don't know where you're going, you'll get there every time. So right. it's like yeah. you need to know where you're going. Like you were right, saying right, earlier. Right, 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 right. I always tell people sometimes the thing you're in might not be the thing you want to be in, but right. it might lead to the thing. Right. Like me just doing, like, for example, Fairly Odd Parents. I mean, I never knew I'd have my own TV series. I was working on other TV series, right. but I did every job in those series. So by the time I got my series, I knew how to do everything. You were prepared. I was prepared. You had the skill set. I was prepped. And then yeah. like, you know, Fairly Odd Parents lasted a long time, but I've, I've gone out of Nickelodeon now. So yeah. it's like, what am I going to do? I'm still a creative guy like yeah. you and I want to do stuff. So my wife and I are starting our own streaming service. And, I love uh, that. So when you got and your I, shows ready, Brave Thongs, they're family friendly. It's a family friendly streaming <laughs> yeah, service. Okay. And so is there family friendly? Bring I use a in. lot of swear words. There you go. You know, we can do one without, we could do one where we just beep everything. The whole thing's beep. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we call it bleep. That's the name of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly blurred. It's, it's just blurry. all just, yeah, yeah. it's all a yeah. mess. No, you um, write your own version of a Ned's type of show or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I really love that you and your wife with your time have decided to empower others too. I think that's such a huge uh, part of becoming a valuable part of society <laughs> and like and like using whatever grace you've had in your life to keep it going yeah, like exactly, give it out exactly. and keep it moving exactly. um it's so weird to have booked a show that as a kid, I'm playing a character who genuinely wants to help people, uh, all people, no matter who they are, nerds, bullies, all of them, like Ned wanted to help everybody and everyone at home. And I just booked that out of luck and circumstance and like life working out and Scott Fellows liking me. Yep. And then as I've grown up, like Ned and the show is exactly aligned with how I feel about the world and yeah, how well, I want to interact with good others. For you, man, that's, that's great. some wild cosmic. It is wild. Thing, it's man. wildly cosmic. It's, it's a it's a weird mystical. Thing I have to, to ask on this. That. I can't let this go. What is that around your shoulders? Is that like a holster? Oh, oh, what yeah, is that? It's, it's my modern oh. holster. Is that what see, it is? I didn't see, see we don't gunsling now. Yeah, yeah. So you have, like, I have my grenades? phone and my wallet. <laughs> Quick oh, texting. Yeah. Quick paying. That's what that is. It's like a money belt kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it smart. keeps my pockets clear. I love And that. it's not a fanny pack and it's not a merce. It just hangs and it's What's my it called? pockets. It's called a holster. holster. Yeah. You know, you just became the better Drake Bell. That's yes. what you just became right there. Guys, I oh! love that this keeps being said. I didn't say it, guys. I didn't say it. They said it. We love Drake here on Speech Bubble. Drake's a good pal. But, uh, you of know. Of course. Yeah. I think you're just as All good. All the at, like, Nickelodeon families. Like, we all have love and respect uh, for each other. There you go, other. bro, exactly. What was going on at the time during Ned's? Uh, like Unfabulous oh, and yeah. Zoe 101 and Ned's were all part of the same bracket. Like, okay. yep. coming out, Drake and Josh was already on and went longer than us and then just spun off into iCarly. So mm -hmm. they they just they were just going for forever and were yeah, yeah, yeah. more famous than any of us on Ned's. <laughs> 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 No competition. Uh, um, not but, this competition, uh, but it's no big deal. But yeah, but Unfabulous and Zoe 101 were were the same time. And then on Disney, who was there at the same time? There was Zach and Cody. Han Zach and Cody. Zach and Cody was a show. Hannah Montana, I mm -hmm. think, was overlapping. Um, was there, was there um, what was it, Lizzie McGuire? Was that one? That was, was that before. Early? That was, was before. Okay. Um, yeah, Hannah Montana was cool. Like Mitchell Musso and I like came out to LA. Like we were, we were like, in pilot seasons together oh, before seen, I was on all the auditions. Yeah, yeah what's so up, funny. Dude? David Henry from um, Wizards of Waverly mm -hmm. Place. Him too. Like we were at Oakwood for pilot oh, yeah? seasons with our moms, yeah, like yeah. auditioning together before we all got on our shows. I've I've heard heard it's Oakwood been a cool, has a weird environment with the kid actors too. Yeah, it, so. it's it's gone now, yeah, or sure. it's a different thing now. Yeah. But yeah, Oakwood was like the place that all the the moms from out of town with kid actors would come and. Just stay for, for our listeners, season. it's like an apartment building. Yeah, it's an apartment complex in LA on Barham Boulevard. Yeah. All like 
the kid actors, that was like the hub of like child actors coming into auditions. So now did you guys move to LA when you, when you had the, you it guys was, are already living it here. It was a gradual process. We would come out for pilot season. So like three months and then four months and then I booked Ned's and then it was like six months a year. And then we go back to Georgia and then seven uh, months. Yeah. Like it really was right. this gradual shifting right. where it was split. And then all of a sudden we were only spending two weeks in the summer and two weeks in the winter in Georgia and all the other time in LA. Wow. Pretty cool. Now, do you have any brothers or sisters? I have an older sister, Vanessa, who okay. lives in Australia. Vanessa, wow. Wor Vanessa Workheiser. Vanessa Workheiser. Yeah, who who works in Australia. Yes. Okay. What does she do in Australia? What go? Just she loves works Australia. At, and and her boyfriend's Australian. And that's cool. They man. live in South Sydney. And yeah, I'm gonna go visit. Yeah, my 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 uh, I, my my girlfriend's brother. I, yeah, my David my, Workheiser. My sister lives down in Sydney, um, <laughs> down under. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be going in February. Have you been there many times? I've been there once. Okay. It's very far and very expensive. It and, is and like I said, I work day jobs now and have no money. Um, <laughs> you have a little money. Yeah, okay, hey. Yeah, we can use some help. Kids, we can use yeah, some help kids, up manage around. your money well. <laughs> we could use some help cleaning up around here if you want to. I mean, the savings we, ran out, you know? Like, uh, uh, I get Ned's fans who, like, reach out to me and they're like, they, like, assume I just have, like, millions of dollars because I was on course. a Nickelodeon show. And first of, of all, I'm like, <laughs> you don't know Nickelodeon. <laughs> second of all. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Devin. Yeah. There you Butch go. Knows. There you go. Here. Um, <laughs> Cue the violin. <laughs> Wait, Devin, violin. But, like, I there mean, yeah, I had more money than any 15-year-old would have. Of course. But, but it, it, it ran out. I uh, <laughs> life's expensive. Like oh. I didn't buy, I didn't buy crazy stuff. Like I, my, my car's a Scion TC. That I got I, it. That's my Sweet car. Sweet ride, bro. I love it. I love my car. You have like, the holster. I got my holster. Got like holster. I didn't spend money on like extravagant things, but like I just lived well until, uh. You paid rent. You yeah, ate food. Yeah, paid rent. I lived in LA. Food, it was yeah. expensive. And, uh, yeah. Food. And I bought a, and I bought a jet. And, and now that's I. All, and <laughs> No, <laughs> that was no side. problem. That was just a little expenditure. Uh, Tower, this is Workheiser One. We need to go cross permission for a landing. Air Force nerd. Um, <laughs> exactly. And the gasoline for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sit. sitting there. It's a nice party jet. Like, um, Devin, can we fly? No, we don't fly. We don't fly this jet. Yeah, m money's money's a weird one when it comes to like kid actors too, and like people's assumption of of how much you have and oh, don't yeah. have. I agree. I'm sure for you to like you you fairly odd parents. Yeah. What you we did okay. You must have a jet. They must have a jet. <laughs> hey, but, jet. Yeah, yeah. Butch, can you like uh, pay my kids' tuition to college? You're like, well, I'd like- I have I, my own kids. I have Thanks. my own kids. Like, <laughs> no, you know what? If you, if you work it right and you have uh, good managers, like I had, yeah. I had good agents and I had a lawyer, yeah. and, uh, you really have to get people. Because I'm a creative guy. I would sit and want to draw cartoons all day. Yeah. So I, I I got this great agent and their job all day is to look through contracts and negotiate things. Yeah, and make sure it's And good. they get to be the bad guy. It's like, look, they, they will call up you know Nickelodeon or whatever studio and say, Butch really wants to do this, yeah. but you know, can you add this and this and that? Right. And then Nickelodeon calls me going, I can't believe your agent is doing this. I'm like, like, I can't, I, know. I, go, I can't believe that. <laughs> and I call them going, great job. That's yeah, nice. Great you're job. You're doing great. Well done. So no, that's, it's getting the proper management. I tell people all the time too, and I'm glad you're talking about this. It's yeah. like when you come out to LA, if you come out alone, that's one thing. Yeah. But build up a team around you, yes. like, like 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 if it's a support group of friends yes. or legal people, because things yes, might there, something might happen with money that you're going to need to be smart about. Yeah, and there's this illusion or delusion that uh, success happens just by like isolated greatness, oh, and God. it just doesn't. It everyone has a team of people behind them. Yeah. Uh, amazing, Everybody. Amazing HBO documentary right now, Momentum Generation, about the mm. surfers in the 90s, uh, Rob Machado and Kelly Slater and their whole crew mm. who dominated surfing in the 90s and changed the sport. But the story is, the documentary is, it tragic? is so beautiful. Is it, is it, no, it's beautiful. It oh, talks good. about how, like, they weren't just isolated competitors doing greatness. They were this close knit friend group that had these different tensions mm. and they all kind of lifted each other up based on circumstance. And like it, no one's doing it alone. Like these guys yeah. raised to the top of surfing and changed the sport because they were a crew. Yeah, because exactly. It bounced off each other. Yeah. Well, like um, even even like the stuff we're doing now, like just just this podcast. Yeah. And Jace does an amazing job on this, and we have our amazing Victoria back there. We even yeah, have yeah. other people who are you know David, our editor. There's a and whole stuff. staff back and, here. Oh, yeah. exactly. A whole bunch of people. And then my, well, two people. Yeah. Well, then my amazing wife, who I can't do anything without. I mean, she, sure. We, we we work together on everything. Love but, that. But like um, Scott like, Fellows too. And Scott and, Fellows and, who no no and Michelle like Scott and his wife. Oh yeah, they, Scott. They Scott and I don't work together on anything. Come on, don't give Scott into this. Scott and Michelle like they're like they work on everything. They're like a husband wife team. They really are. They do a great job together. 
And um, but it's having that team, and especially we've been doing a lot of YouTube videos over the last couple of years. Yeah. With our YouTube channel, and you cannot do that alone. And it's like no. you need to, you know, collaborate. It's like you know, just shooting a video is one thing, but it's editing it, and yeah. then it's then it's where do I put it? And yeah. Playing that game of YouTube and how to yeah. put it on. We've learned a lot about that over the last year, especially. Yeah, <laughs> especially, man, yeah a lot. I, I've like dabbled a lot in in trying to do a lot of things on my <sighs> own and or trying to do it with a team. And I think just like. Yeah, having the right team is really important and kind of my my community of friends is amazing mm -hmm. and I'm starting to figure out how to collaborate with them more because we already have this thing. Yeah. Um while still building out like my professional team because I, I feel like that's where I've like that that's where I've like stopped and started is just yeah. not having the right Yeah team around and me. It, and it can start with, right. I tell people too, and we use the word team, but it's like just having friends yeah, that you yeah, trust. Yeah. I mean, I like friends that I can trust. Be you too. Like yeah. you're a team. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we're a team. Scrunch down. We, we talked team? about this. <laughs> we keep scrunching. We got to do the scrunching thing. We're a team. Yes. We're a team. People that you trust who will give you uh, honest feedback. Yeah. Who you feel good about spending a lot of time uh, creating absolutely. stuff with and going through the annoying yeah. bits with. I just read, yeah. uh, I, there was just a video I watched on YouTube uh, very recently, and I think we could say his name. Uh, Matt Pat just put this video out. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I just sent it to you last yeah, time. Yeah, Matt Pat. You know who Matt Pat is? I on, on you, Matt Pat's this. He does game theory, film okay. theory on YouTube. Anyway. Huge YouTube channels, okay, and he's great. a great guy. We collab with him on uh, one of our YouTube videos. Like what a, ten million subscribers, like that big. Yeah, like, wonderful dude. But yeah. he was just talking about film theory. He stuff. was just talking about how he was working with people who he trusted. Yeah, who totally ripped him off, and mm. and then not only did they rip him off, the company that they were working for ended up closing, and now he's mm. having a hard time getting his money back, and blah blah blah, because a lot of these YouTube channels were with these um, channel management companies, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of these channel management companies. Yeah, when you get with these companies, yeah. you have to be very, very smart who you go with. And so anyway, right. this guy, as big as he is and as influential as he uh, is, still had to watch himself. And it was really kind of, the video is great. I should send it to you. Yeah, I want to see that. It's a learning, uh, it's, and he put it out. So, I mean, I, definitely it's out there. So right. he um, he put it out. It's a it's a learning, uh, uh, it's a class for those of us who are being creative for sure. Yes, yeah, succeeding is a violent and horrible process. Succeeding <laughs> requires you to fail and yeah, have like sure stuff go devastatingly wrong. Yeah. Like him having all that success, but being mismanaged and like totally, struggling totally. to get there and having people take advantage. Like, yeah. and you only learn through that experience yeah. of failure. Well, you're, it's I, horrible. I tell people all it's the time, you're going, well, well, failure <laughs> is horrible, but you're going to fail more than you succeed. Yes. Which so makes increase success. your rate of failure. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Fail exactly. As exactly. You fail as fast as you can. Go. But you're you're going to keep learning though. And then by the are. time you do get there, it's going to be so much better because when you do get there, like, for example, if you got a big major show right now, I'm sure there's a million things you do differently. A million. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, exactly. So, so, so Devin, we're going to give you a show right now. Bring it in, everybody. <laughs> Devin, <laughs> he's a brand new show. Steven Spielberg. There you go. <laughs> We're all here. Come on, here Come they on are. in, guys. guys. It's me, Devin. <laughs> Speech it's, bubble the movie. You're speaking to like uh, deep, deep dreams. Um, I know, I know. But dude, that can happen for you. You're only, you're only yeah. 27 yeah, years I got, old, dude. I got plenty of- Millions of years. I got plenty of time. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I thought after Ned's, um, my career would just be set. Right, like oh, sure. I just thought I had my own Nickelodeon show that got Boom. great ratings. Who I was the title character. Who wouldn't like, want me? It's only up from here, yeah. and it was not the case. I think, especially because we missed that social media boat. Mm. Now it is more so the case that if you get off a show and you got a bunch of followers, like it's gonna lead to more work. It could. But it was before that yeah. quantitative yep. uh, number, so I thought it would just lead to immediate success, and that's what I wanted. Um, it did not go that way mm. uh, because coming from Nickelodeon, like casting directors for serious movies, like oh Nickelodeon person, I yeah, can, like yeah. so what? Yeah, like come show me that you can act. Isn't that amazing. And I, I had know. to go back to acting class and like really like break down everything that I thought about acting and actually learn how to get in there and do real work. How about that? Um, so I had that time to do that. I trained with an amazing coach in LA called Michael, named Michael Wilson. He's like a mentor and awesome deep friend of mine. Right. Um, yeah, so after Ned's not getting the success I wanted, I had to go like get serious about my craft, make sure I could back that up yep. uh, in auditions. And then it's been this weird 
process that yeah led me to like totally day good. jobs it so hasn't gone how i thought <laughs> how long have the day jobs been happening when two you years now mm. two years yeah I, 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 I hate to tell you this there's people out there listening going you've only worked in a day I job know. for two years yeah I, no one has any it's, sympathy it's unfortunately. not it's not something to cry about it's uncomfortable yeah. growth but like no it's yeah. normal to yeah. work it is people totally have normal. my dad worked day jobs since he was like 13 yeah. you know like yeah. um it's it's kind of a normal yeah it's not really a, a boo yeah. yeah yeah I know thing. but you've got a great attitude about but it but it though. was I mean it was painful at times I worked the front desk at Equinox a, a very fancy gym in L A there you go um, which was crazy like a, a, only a couple times like checking people in who like I know <laughs> oh they knew who <laughs> on, you like, were like an acting level T Terry Crews I've worked with and. Uh, I watched him walk by at Equinox one day, and I, I it, that was a weird moment where I didn't say hi. Like I, mm. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to. That was a weird like you were little embarrassed just, or something. Yeah, oh, just dude, like don't be embarrassed. I know, and yeah. he yeah. is the mo he is the nicest, yeah. most positive, most wouldn't judge me for. Wor I had oh, to yeah. work a yeah. Everyone works jobs, um, but it was this weird like ego. Like I don't even want to say oh, hi because yeah. Terry's going by. And, like I have a funny Terry. I have job. a funny Terry Crews story when I, was, when I was doing fairly odd. He's an angel. Well, a friend of mine who was a cop in LA, mm -hmm. uh, this is years ago, like 2005 or so. He goes, um, Hey man, a friend of mine's an artist and he would love to show you stuff. I'm like, sure. Okay. So I see the guy's stuff without seeing the guy. Yes. yes Good stuff. Yes, Very talented. Great. Yes. He's like, a great well, artist. I'd love to meet the guy, but I don't really have any room for another artist. Well, he knows that, but he'd love to meet you anyway. I'm like, okay, I'll go meet him. This is amazing. So I walk out into the Nickelodeon lobby yeah. and this guy stands up and I look and I keep looking up and up and up and it's Terry Crews, but he wasn't like, Terry Crews, the actor at the time, he was just Terry sure. Crews, the guy. Sure. But, extremely muscular but he was just guy. extremely muscular yeah. dude. And I'm like, and he was like the nicest guy. And like, hey man. Guy. He's like, hey man, how you doing? I'm like, uh, hey dude, amazing artwork. I don't have any room right now. And I'm thinking, God, if I ever hired this guy and had to fire him, he would murder me. You know, this guy. <laughs> but he was just the nicest guy, but it was Terry Crews. It was yeah. the coolest thing. He He's incredible. I, I, I had kind of seen him just at random events throughout the years. And then him and I did a movie together a couple years ago. And, um, He's an incredible human being. Yeah. Like his worldview and, and what he puts out there and who sure. he is as a man. Yeah. Uh, despite, yeah, people's assumption because he's just like a intimidating, imposing yeah. figure yeah. is, yeah, that like he'll be violent if, and he's, he's like, like so Jace. not. It kind of reminds me of Jace. Yeah. Very intimidating. Same Physic body structure. Physically <laughs> intimidating. You guys are physical twins. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. I've been told that a lot. It's yeah. Like, Terry. Oh. So <laughs> you're, a, you're a better Drake Bell and he's a better Terry Crews. Right. Yeah. This is that, wild. That's, that's, that's true. I have, like, you're, it was called Where's the Money? The movie? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Logan Paul was also in that movie, right? Yes. What What's, uh, What's Logan when was this? You worked with Logan Paul? I'm yeah. Very okay. Curious, How'd that go? Have you had him on? I have not had him on. We, 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 we tried to. We have a story about it. I have yeah. a story about it. Right. I, 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 we, we direct message him on Twitter one yeah. day. Yeah. Hey, man, we'd love to have him on the podcast. He's like, let's do it. Yeah. And like, like answer like five no, no. minutes later. Yeah. Not let's do it in all caps. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Like, then, then I'm like, cool. When? No answer. And then like, Six months later, I and, and I'm like my dude's like, let's do it, bro. Totally down. Oh, never, yes. an, never got an answer yeah. again, and and then um, I, I he's never answered. Logan, <laughs> come on, man, get on the Logan. podcast, man. The whole Japan thing happened right after that. So yeah. his, his whole oh, the whole thing, yeah. the, the, the Japan what, scandal thing happened what, with what's, him. Yeah. What's his deal? <laughs> give some deets on Logan Paul. Can you give deets? Yeah, like, uh, but I'm, I'm, I am gonna be careful about what of I say. Be careful. Like, curious what he's like outside of the vlog. He, he was. Idea, you know? uh, all right, we shot a movie for 15 days. It was the quickest movie shoot wow. I've ever been on, and somehow that movie is like I, I actually like it. I'm proud of what we made, and I can't believe we made it in the time we did. 15 wow. days. In, that's insane. To make a feature film, yeah. crazy. Usually, it's, it's like, like a whole, and, an hour and a half. Or it's at least yeah, it's at least, it's at least wow. a month. It's at least yeah. a month. And we did it in fifteen days. That's and crazy. it's a broad comedy. Like you need time to explore some of these jokes. And like we didn't have wow. time. Uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, Logan was fantastic on set. Like I I didn't really know him coming on to the the shoot. I didn't. I don't know a lot of the the social media guys. Sure. But um, but he had a huge following at the time, and he was fantastic on set. Like worked really hard. I thought he was really funny. Has um, lines down. Yeah, he was super professional. There you go. Worked really hard and hustle. Him and uh, Batch, him and oh, King yeah. Batch who are in the movie. These dudes, it's it's not a wonder why they have the following that they have. They work so hard at it. Those do, dudes, were they doing videos on set and all that stuff, the whole thing? Every single day. We were shooting 12 hours a day. Batch is the lead of the movie. He's shooting uh, you know, 12 hours a day and then going home and editing until five in the morning to put up one of his videos. Like he, wow. they both work. It is, dude, that it world is, it is work, like, dude. 
like beyond a full time job. It's a twenty four hour thing. Jay says that too. He was outside with no key, that's sitting right. on the stoop, editing today. Well. That's what he was doing right there. Yeah, yeah and thing. and I th I think maybe Logan got caught up in the momentum of that thing that he was doing. He started to make a vlog every single day mm -hmm. for over a year leading up to the yeah. Japan thing. And yeah, you know, I don't I don't really know what to say. My experience of him was like. Cool. Was like he was cool. We still got to get him on. Yeah, and we like, treat him with major and, respect, mad yeah, respect for Logan Paul. He's a he's a young dude with a boatload of fame and validation, and it's a weird thing, man, to have fourteen weird. million people telling you you're amazing. Yeah, it is weird. It does strange things to a person. Yeah. So yeah, I don't go. know, man. My hands okay, are got off it. it. Got it. No, totally. My all I know is I got all it. I know is I got my holster and I work in Venice. That's, That's all I'm right, saying. That's right, man. Right. I work my day job. I That's got my it. friends. I'm creating some things. I make music. Well, dude, what can I we stay out of what, the beef? What can we plug for you? What can we like? What What do you got coming up? Or do you anything anything cool we need to listen to or see uh, what's going on? I mean, yeah, I really should have planned coming on this when I have something to <laughs> <laughs> let's make something Terrible up. Terrible PR. Let's make something up. Movie with Steven Spielberg and Tommy. Yeah, I mean, really, just like if you're watching this and you're a fan of Ned's like please keep up with me like follow me I, I'm creating stuff all the time it's, and uh, it's at Devin work harder at Devin work harder on on the social medias um, there we go. I will I mean I have music up now on Spotify and, and Apple music like you can go listen to my music that's already out there's a new EP coming in 2019 that's gonna be amazing uh, and we do find it at Devin Workheiser it's not like Devin it's not like Devin uh, like work oh, you like can shorten your name, name. No, 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 yeah, Devin yeah. Workheiser cool. for my music um, uh, you can go to my YouTube, which is Work TV. Um, a couple years ago, I did a 20 episode uh, like series in my house, just the life survival guide. I just like gave some kind of broad life right. advice. Right. Um, did it shoot through the roof? It, it didn't. It was it was a small amount of like views, but the people like it was exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be bigger, but the people who watched it in the comments were exactly what I intended for it. Which Very is, like, cool, man. People to actually get something from it, and I would respond back to people, and it's it's really a cool thing. Um, so yeah, I did that for twenty episodes, and I think there's like some really cool, valuable stuff on there. Well, I'm here. Um, to, I'm here to encourage you, my friend. You are working hard still, and, and something's going to pop for you very soon. I, I, I think, think it's going to so. go very well. I think I you're think a good so. guy, and you work hard, and you got a lot. Of, you got a great track record. Yeah, thanks. No scandals. Man. No scandals. No, I'm pretty scandal free. Yeah, by the way, even if you are, I think it's better if you have a scandal. Actually, I know. People love I know. A good we should scandal. probably stir one up. Want to do, do something? What you should we do? Beat me up or something? No, that's not a scandal. Oh, we would. That's I not would a never. I, no, that's just. I love assault. Jace. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all out of assault. Dang, Jace. It's God. just assault, my man. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I've stayed pretty scandal free, and I just, I don't know, man. I just keep working hard and plugging. Well, I am. I, I, I am glad you came life. on the podcast, man. Thank you so much. I'm you want to come back sometime? I would love to. Let me know when. When I have something to promote. Not even that. Let's just hang out and talk. I'm, I'm me, down. Buddy. Let's keep talking about this life thing. I think it's uh, pretty valuable. We got a few subscribers you know? on our YouTube channel. I, we I've got, seen we, we got you. A you got a nice, little you got a nice a viewership. A little yeah. bit of a reach there, you know. So yeah. it will be great to have you back on and, uh, and, yeah. and enhance the speech bubble even more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and get to draw on Ned's Declassified I'm Butch Hartman style. Idea. I promise you I'll do that. I'll That's, come back I, on to see that. That sounds so cool. Next time we'll have you and Drake on. And, and we'll fuel the beef. To fuel the beef. <laughs> I would love that. Make it bigger. Make it like, yeah. Really I'll put make you, it a thing. I'll put him, I'll put you on this side of the table yeah. and I'll yeah. stand there. Say there you hey. Go. We'll just back off let you guys go at it. All right, well, we're going to wrap up with Devin Workheiser. I want to thank you guys for listening. Yes. And uh, Jace, uh, you look just like Terry Crews. We found yes. that out. Now right. scrunch down, scrunch down as we yeah, go. Come on, Robin. Right, guys. Any parting words? It's a long pause. That's, that's such a big question. Um, oh, parting words. Parting words. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know. It, it all keeps going. You there know? we go. Devin Workheiser, it all keeps going. <laughs> it all going. keeps going. All right, man. guys. Roll the theme music. Mm -hmm.